On the menu bar here, I'm gonna click on the insert ribbon and I'm gonna go down here and find the text input. All right, so we have a text input control on the screen here. So by far the two most important properties that you need to know about while working with a text input control is text and default. So the text property of a text box or a text input control is what you see in the text box. So for example, right now, the text property has this text input. That's what it is. And if I were to type some more, text here, the text property would include all of this text, including a space that I put in there at the end. Now contrast that with a property and over on the right side, we'll see there is a default property. Now the default property, if I were to click on that word default, you see that it's text input, which is different than what's in the text box right now. So the default property is what you want that control to start with. So if you wanted to start with an empty string, what you want to do is change that to an empty string just two double quotes like that. You'll also notice for the text property is that you really can't access it here in the environment. You might think you can get to the text property here, but you can't. If I were to add a label here to this screen and I were to go into the text property of this label and type in text input, which is the name of our text input control or our text box, and reference, there is the text property. You can access it with an expression on another control or in code, but as far as clicking on the control and accessing the text property, you can't do so like you can with the default. And it makes sense because default is an input property and the text property, it's an output property. So let's try another test. Let's add a button here to the screen and let me see if I can change the text inside that text box, that text input property, by adding some code behind this button and I can type in text and put to dot text. So we can access it with this button, but this is the on select. We, ha we have some code here. So let's try to assign a value to this. So if you come from a background of coding, C sharp, VB, Java, JavaScript, what have you, you're probably familiar with code that would look like this. And let's put uh, a new value in here. Okay, so you might think that you could do this. So I'm gonna hit F5 to run this. I'm gonna click on the button and it's not really gonna do anything for us. So this is something that you would do in a, in a uh, coding language that is procedural in, in nature. Power Apps is more declarative in nature, sort of like Excel. So you've got a cell in Excel and you could use the equal sign and actually put some value, either a static value or a dynamic value in there. I just wanted to show you that, that you can't assign that. The, who has control over this text? It's the user. The user has control over that text, okay? And if you wanna assert control over what goes in this text box, you can do so in the default property. So what I'm gonna do here is go in the default property, I'm gonna type in beginning value, okay? I'm gonna change this text. And let's say whenever the user clicks this button, we want this text box to have another value other than what the user has input. Well, you can do so by going into this button. And what I'm gonna type here instead is I'm gonna use a function called reset. Okay, and I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna pass to it as a parameter, the name of the text box. Text input two. Okay, I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna click on that button and it'll reset it back. That's how you can dynamically have control over the value in a text box at runtime. You set up the default and that default value can have a very complex expression if you want to, if it needs to be. And then somewhere in your application, you could actually reset that text box. Hey, if you're getting anything helpful out of this, a comment or even a like really helps the channel. And that's people like you know this is good content. Much appreciated. We now know the difference between the text property and the default property of a text box. Something else that is very important while working with a text input control is the on change event. So let's click on this text input control. We'll go up to the top and we'll click on action. And we'll click on on change. So whatever code you put here is going to be executed whenever the text inside this text input control changes. So let's type in some code here that's going to run every time the text changes. All right, so I'm going to use a function called notify. The on change event fired. And let's grab that text. And we don't have to memorize the name of the control. We can simply type self.text. So let's 
run this. I'm going to type in changed, but you notice there's no notification that comes up. You see there's a little blinking cursor in that text input control. If I were to click on something else or hit tab, it will change the focus from that text box off and will actually fire that event. So make a mental note that on change event really doesn't get fired whenever the text changes. It happens whenever the focus moves off of that control and then it finally fires it. Okay, what about the hint text? Now, hint text only comes into play when there is a blank value in the text box. So over here for the default, I'm gonna set this up to be a blank value, okay? And I can simply click on the words hint text and I could type something here. This is a message that gives a hint to the user of what perhaps they should type there. So if this was a field for first name, I could type that there instead. And a lot of times what you'll see with programs that people create, even Power Apps, is that you'll have a little label that's put right above a text input and they'll say first name. You know, you could probably just get away with not having a label there and just having that hint text in there. So sometimes it is handy to have and to utilize. All right, what about the clear button? So a lot of times text boxes are used for search. So for example, over here in the hint text, we can say search. So they know this is a little search box. Perhaps we could have an icon over here. I'm just gonna add any old icon, put it here to the side, and I'm gonna type in search. If somebody enters a, a search string here, what's common to be seen is to have a little X or something to reset this text input. And you can easily do so. <laughs> here we get a message that has changed, very good. I'm gonna click on that text input control and I'm gonna go over here to the right side of the screen. We've got a little property here called clear button and I'm gonna select that to be true, okay? So now if I run this, as long as that control has some text in it, and it has focus, this little X will appear. Okay, so if I click on it, now there is no text. It does have focus, but as soon as something is entered, we have that little X there. Now, what if we're using this control for a specific amount of characters? Well, we don't wanna allow them to type more than, let's say, 100 characters if we only have 100 characters for the field in the database. Selecting this control, we'll go over here to the right, and there is a field called maximum length, and we can set that, let's set it to be 10. So here in the United States, a zip code will start off with five numbers, such as 90210, which is actually the name of a TV show back in the 80s or early 90s, perhaps. <laughs> There's a suffix number that you could also have in your zip code. That's a four digit code. Here we have five. Well, we could have a dash in here and perhaps four more characters. So that's a total of 10 characters. Now, something else I wanna show you guys is let's say we only want users to be able to enter numbers. Well, there's another property we can use for that, and it is the format. So if you go over here to format, you've got a drop down, and you have two choices, either number or text. So I'm gonna change this to number, and it blanked everything out for us. Now let's try to type this in again. 90210 dash will not allow a dash. It will allow a decimal or a dot. So that's important to know as well. So that property is called format. What about the mode of a text input? I'm gonna add a new text input to the screen here. Let's look at the three modes that this text input control can be in. So going over here to the side, the property window, will open up the mode choices. We have single line, which is the default. We have multi-line. So if you want like a text area, you want multiple lines of text, you want them to have more space to type in, they could use that. But we also have password. So you're already familiar with single line. Let's change this to multi-line. And you notice it didn't open it up anymore. Let's, let's open this up a little more. Even then, I probably still wanna have the, the top to be at least be 10 pixels, okay, a little closer to 12, and maybe even change that left to 10 as well. I might ha wanna have it 10 all the way around. So if you're using comments or notes, uh, type of a, a column or field in your database, and you're creating a control to allow the user to enter input for that, you might wanna change that mode to multi-line. If you're creating a screen in which someone needs to enter some sensitive information, like a password, social security number, or some other, sensitive information. What you wanna do, I'm gonna add a new text input control to the screen here, and I'm gonna change the mode to password. Doesn't have to be a password. 
It could be a personal identification number, a pen. So whatever is typed in here, it's just going to give you a dot for each character that's in there. Now, what happens if we were to set up a label like we did for this other text input and we referenced it? So this is text input four. I'm going to copy that. And here for this label, I'm going to paste that dot text. Okay, look at that. So it is just hiding the input from the user or prying eyes to the user's screen, but here within the application, it is still very easily accessible. One more thing that you might want to utilize for a multi-line text input control is spell check. So something you'll notice over here in the property window, there is a property called enable spell check. So you might as well enable that. Now let's say you want to lock down a text input control. Perhaps there's something on the screen that happens, and in that condition, under that criteria, you want to lock down or disable that text input control. That's very easy. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a checkbox control to this screen, and I'm going to put it right above this zip code entry field. And the text for this checkbox, I'm going to have it display the words provide zip code, and I'm going to make it a little wider. So what I want to do is I'm going to lock down this zip control input unless they've checked this off. I'm going to click on this checkbox. I'm going to give it a meaningful name, CHK for checkbox, provide zip. I'm going to copy that name and I'm going to click on this text input control. Over here on the right side, I'm going to go find the display mode. Now you notice that there's actually three modes it can be in, either edit, disabled, or view. If you just want that text input to display information, you might just want to create a label but if you want it to dynamically change. Okay, so if I click on display mode here, I'm gonna open up the code window here and I'm gonna to go to the very beginning, this code window, and I'm gonna use the if function, if that checkbox is checked, the checkbox.value. So if it is checked, that will be true. So that's the first parameter that the if function needs. The second parameter is what's going to be returned if that value is true. If that checkbox is checked, we want it to be editable. Otherwise, we want it to be disabled. So I'm going to use that there. Now let's run this and test this out. So you can see right now, it is disabled. It's grayed out. No one can change anything in here. I'm going to check out this checkbox, and now I can go in here and edit it. Notice I can't type in any more characters than 10. So that's how you can disable a text input control. Another useful property that I think you should know about is the border radius. Some controls have this, some don't. But for a text box or the text input control, it is there for you to use. And you'll find it over here on the property window, border radius. So if you click on the word here, you have this expression bar up here. And you can change this to, let's say, 20. So that is 20 pixels. Now what you would think it would do, you see that it rounded this first corner here, which you would think is it would round all the corners the same exact way. Sort of what you have for a button here. So if I click on the button, I have a border radius of 10. And if I change that to 20 and hit enter, notice that it rounds all the corners. So the text box is uh, a little stubborn here. So what we want to do is you notice we have a radius top left. We have a radius top right. Let's change that. We have a radius bottom left and a radius bottom right. Now, guys, I do have a video like this where I talk about all the really important properties that you need to know about for the button. Be sure to check that out. I'll have a link up at the top of this video. Guys, for some reason, YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video next. Let's see if they're right. Or you can select this playlist, which I've selected for you based on the content you're currently watching. Guys, gotta hurry, click one of them. Otherwise, YouTube's gonna autoplay some other video, which you probably don't want.